Hey everyone, hope you are all doing well. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you a comparison between scanning your own film negatives at home versus using a lab to do everything for you. I'll also quickly be chatting about if buying a scanner is worth it and the costs that come with it, so stick around to the end for my final thoughts. I personally have my own scanner because I like having the flexibility of doing it myself and having full control over the final image. So I recently got some scans back from a company here in Vancouver called Caresdale Cameras. It was actually for a video that we did reviewing the film stock Ektar 100. You can find that linked up above here or you can click it in the description. And I was just overall curious how much of a difference it would have been if I personally scanned them myself. I rarely get my film scanned anymore. I personally think it's way too pricey. So at the start of my film photography journey, I invested in a scanner, which is the Epson V600. I'm currently using Apple's new M1 MacBook Pro with Epson Scan 2. And if anyone was curious on how that ran with the new MacBook Pros, I can say that it runs smooth and flawlessly. So now I'm gonna start cutting up the negatives to prepare them for scanning. And yes, I do not use any gloves, so you can roast me all you want, but that's just how I do things. I actually forgot I already got them cut at the lab, so that's really nice. Normally I would just snip them into fours and they will fit into this holder here. So when you buy the scanner, you're given two of these. You're given one for 35 millimeter film, and you're also given another one for medium format, which is nice. But today we are working with 35 mil, and it is gonna be my Ektar 100 shots. So I'm gonna first start loading them into the tray here. This is what holds them in place for when they are getting scanned. I try and be very careful with these. I try and only touch the edges, because once you get some form of a smear on it, it's pretty much impossible to get it out. So just be very careful when dealing with the film negatives. So once you have them loaded in the tray, I like to just make sure that there's no extra dust and particles on the, the negatives. After that, you can now load it into the film scanner. They have these little placements for the tray and it just locks in for where you need it to be. And then you just close it down and we'll head over to our software now and I usually will hit preview. So from here, you can now choose which film negatives you would like to be scanned. So when you come over here to settings, this is what I personally use. I go transparency unit, color negative film, uh, 48 bit color. And then for DPI resolution, I'll usually put this up to 3200 for 35 mil and then scanning quality is high. I make sure that this is a TIFF file. So that is essentially a raw file. So it gives you incredible flexibility when editing it. The mode will be photo mode. And I know there's a advanced settings here. I actually don't personally mess with any of this. I'm sure there's other things that you could be doing within this software, but I just do the very basics. And then down here, you just choose your folder source. And then from there, all you're gonna do is just hit scan. So the scanner just finished and the scans are looking pretty good. I do still like to bring them into Lightroom just to give them some more life and to take off any dust or particles that may be on the images. So let's hop right into Lightroom. So we have the images in Lightroom and I'm just gonna change the rotation of them. For my portrait shots, I do four by five, eight by 10 here. I do five by seven for my landscape shots. A good thing to always remember too is to make sure that your horizon line is completely straight all the way through. See a lot of people who, you know, their photos are like that and you know, you obviously don't want that. You want everything to be straight. So make sure your horizon line is always nice and straight. So as you can see, like an image like this, it feels a little bit too dark. Feels like, you know, some of this down here can be a little bit brighter. So that's why I like to bring it into Lightroom to do some of those changes. There is a weird line in this. I've had this happen before. Might be just something that happens in the scanner, but we can fix that in Photoshop. 
So now that they're all rotated, I'm just gonna dive right in into how I'd edit these. I usually start with a preset that I made and just see how that looks on it. I have like a few here. I think I'll start with that one. And again, this is all personal preference, right? So I'm just doing it how I like it. Everyone has different preferences when it comes to color. So this is just how I'm going to be editing them. Okay, so I've finished editing the photos and I'm gonna do a little bit of a comparison now between the scanned ones from Carousel Camera and the ones I just scanned. So the first one is gonna be this photo. Yeah, it's so, it's so interesting because when you look at this, the colors are completely different, you know? It's, I'm not sure if it's the scanner or what their process is like when it comes to giving it this kind of look. When I compare these two, mine is very desaturated, I guess. The Carousel one looks oversaturated almost. When, when you have these two in front of you, you may not think about it when you just see the photos individually, but it makes my image now look a little bit desaturated, but I still am drawn to my own edit. That's just my personal preference. The yellow tones in this are interesting. I don't mind them, but I think if I just boosted my saturation just a bit on mine, I think I'd be happier with it. So I did crop the image just a bit. I do personally like it where the truck is a little bit less in the photo and you're focusing more on what's in front of you. Again, it's very interesting with the colors and whatnot. Um, the one thing I didn't like about Carousel's was that the highlights were obviously blown out. They didn't touch those. I brought back a little bit of the highlight. When I do look at these photos, I do see Carousel as being a lot brighter. Maybe I could increase my exposure just a bit, but I personally like my overall edit. So this is when things get a little interesting with colors. My coat is a true red. And then when you look at Carousel's scan, it doesn't even look red. It looks more orangish. So it's just interesting. I, I'm just curious about what their process is when they're scanning these. But obviously the color of my coat to me seems a lot better in, in my edit just because it's a true red and I wanna show that it's a true red. This just looks like there's a lot of saturation almost like a clarity or something is going on here. It looks really strong in, in, the, in the colors. To me, it doesn't really look natural. And then the final image that I'm comparing is this last shot at the lake. And yeah, it's quite interesting. I mean, you get these interesting tones. It's almost like a faded tone down at the ground here. It's a little bit more yellowy on, on the foreground here which is interesting, I don't mind it. Actually, for this image, I am almost more drawn to the Carousel one. I don't mind it that much. It, it gives it more of a vintage feel than, than mine. Mine maybe looks a tad bit more digital maybe. It's just interesting comparing scans to just see you know, what my eye is drawn to when I'm scanning my images and how I edit them compared to how a lab you know, gives them back to you once they've scanned them. I hope you guys enjoyed that comparison between the scan images from Caresdale and the images that I just scanned at home. So I'm quickly just gonna chat about if buying a scanner is something that you should do. So if you're someone who maybe shoots a roll every couple of months, you know, not super frequently, I would say stick to using a lab and getting your scans back. It's a lot easier, it's less of a hassle, and I think that labs can produce really well scanned images and I'm nothing against them. And I recommend building a relationship with your lab so that they can understand the type of photography and the look and feel that you're trying to go with your images so that they know when they're tweaking things that it's gonna be something that you're gonna enjoy at the end of the day. If you're someone who is crushing through rolls, you're maybe shooting you know, five to 10 rolls a month or you know, even five to 10 rolls every couple months, I would say honestly invest in a scanner. The Epson V600 has been great to me. 
It has great colors and I think it does an awesome job for a really cheap price. I'm gonna put up some numbers right beside me here on the amount of rolls that I've shot and the cost of development for those rolls because all I have to do is pay for development and then the cost of if I got them scanned and you'll see the, the difference in price there. The V600 scanner is around $300 today. So that gives you an idea of where that's at. And there are plenty of other scanners out there. I recommend doing some research, going on YouTube and looking at some reviews to see which one fits your needs the most. So when you look at these numbers on the side, this is the difference between just getting my negatives developed and then coming home and scanning them myself versus paying for scanning and uh, development together. So you can see out of the 40 rolls that I've shot, I've paid $5.99 for just development and then I've gone home and scanned them myself. And below is 40 rolls if I got them scanned and developed. So you can see $239 compared to $800 is drastic. When you add in the scanner itself, that's roughly around $500, so you're still saving money and you don't ever have to pay for scanning ever again once you buy this. You know, if you're planning a long life of film photography, I definitely recommend investing in a scanner. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the thumbs up. It really helps out the channel and I appreciate it. If you wanna stay tuned for more videos, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you're notified for more videos. Other than that, I'll catch you on the next video. Peace out.